Hello everybody, as you might be aware, or as you probably are not aware, because whoever reads patch notes, am I right? Uh, recently, GameMix Studio 2 has added the feature of being able to record GIFs in your games, so you can, uh, using just GML code, you can uh, have the game natively record a animated GIF of your gameplay or of any surface for that matter you can add surfaces to a gif and then save that gif out as an animated gif um pretty helpful for lots of reasons and i'm just going to quickly show you how to set that up we're going to be using the kind of uh the skeleton that currently exists of the action rpg uh the tutorial series i'm currently working on i'm just going to be showing you how you can uh record a cute animation of uh, our cat here killing some of these slimes so to do this, the first thing you're going to want to do is have an object of some kind that you can use to start recording a GIF. I'm using um, a persistent object I have called OGame that's always present throughout my entire game. Um, it's persistent, I make it make one of them right at the start of the game and then I never make any more. Um, so something like that, but you, you can use whatever you want, but I'm using this just because I know it's always going to be there, okay? And in the create event of that object, I'm going to add one variable that I'm going to use to track whether or not we are currently recording a GIF. Okay, I'm going to write GIF record equals false. Okay, just so that we have that variable there and we can check whether or not we're currently recording a GIF. And then we're going to do all of the other work in a new event called the post draw event. Okay, so I'm using this frame because it's uh, an event that happens after everything has been drawn to the screen. So we, um, all of our current frame has been rendered. Okay, what's called our application surface where we, we draw everything, we draw all of our sprites, all of our backgrounds, all that stuff um, is, is nice and full uh, with uh, beautiful imagery for us to uh, stick into our GIF. Okay. Um, so I'll just call this record gif and the um, the description of this because that's all this event is going to be about. Um, so I'm going to decide on a key I want to press for this. Um, you might, depending how you get inputs for your game, you might do this in a different way. But I'm just going to do a very simple if keyboard underscore check underscore pressed uh, open bracket. Uh, I'm going to use the G key because I think I, yeah, I use R for restarting the game. So um, in order to use that key, I'm going to type ord. Uh, open bracket, uh, open quotes, G, close quotes, close bracket, close bracket, close bracket. Uh, I always get caught out on the number of brackets I need to close on that, but uh, <laughs> remember for an odd one it's three, because you're closing this, the condition, uh, this one, and this one, all right? Just make sure you got the same on either side. So if we've pressed uh, the G key, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to invert the contents of that variable that we just declared. Okay, so gif record, uh, which we know is currently false, I'm going to set to equal uh, not gif record. Okay, and that exclamation mark uh, means we're just going to return the opposite of this. So if this is true, it will set it to false, and if this is false, which it is at the start, it will become true. And since we've done that, we've toggled it one way or the other. Um, what we can do now, since we've just toggled that, is check what it currently is. Because if it's currently true, it means it's just become true. And if it's currently false, it means it's just become false on this frame, okay? So that uh, gives us all the info we need to decide whether or not to start recording a GIF or to stop and save, save out our final GIF, okay? So if GIF uh, record, that means we've uh, just started recording uh, GIF. Okay, uh, and then under this else uh, save GIF. Okay, uh, hopefully that structure is clear enough and you can see how this is all going to work. So what we want to do is type GIF equals um, just a new variable called GIF, uh, GIF underscore open. And this is one of the new functions. So we don't we didn't need to declare this variable because uh, we're declaring it as and when we start recording the GIF, okay? We, we're not changing it from anything else or relying on it or checking it, so we can just declare it here. And GIF open is one of our new, um, uh, our new functions, okay? So it's been put in here. Uh, and this creates uh, or return an index of uh, a GIF uh, for us to start putting data into, okay? And the info that we need to give it is a width and a height. Those have to be fixed. Um, 
out of the gate before anything else. So the width and height I'm going to give it are a couple of my macros that I actually have in here called resolution underscore w and resolution underscore h. You might have similar macros or similar variables that hold the intended uh, resolution of your game. Okay, this is a pixel art game and my intended resolution is like, I think it's like 320, let's say, uh, yeah, 320, 180. Okay, um, so I could just put those numbers in, um, those those hard code numbers if I wanted to, but I have those macros, so I'm going to use them. Uh, just you, whatever your game is, you just want to put in your resolution here, or however big you want your GIF to be, you know, like the exact dimensions that you want for your GIF. I want it to be the full size of our game, so that's what I'm going with. Uh, you might notice at the bottom here, the little uh, triple dot uh, down here, and that's because there is um, more, there, there is another optional flag that you can put in here. Um, you can also put in a color that you want to initially clear it to. Uh, that's optional, um, and by default it clears to black, which is uh, perfectly good enough for us. So we just need the, the width and the height, so I'm going to leave it there. The next step, of course, is if uh, GIF record is not true, then we know we've, uh, we, we know we've, it's just become not true, and we can save the GIF. So I'm going to type GIF underscore save, another one of our new functions, and we just need to provide uh, the GIF in terms of GML, which is GIF. Uh, what that we opened here and uh, the file name that we want to save this out as. I'm going to call it uh, in quotation marks too, that's important, capture.gif. All right, uh, close brackets, semicolon. Um, and that's the toggling all done. Um, but in order to actually record, we need to uh, save a frame. We need to manually save each frame that we want to record to this GIF. Uh, so to do that, underneath all this, uh, in the same event, type if under uh, open bracket GIF record close bracket, and then it's just one line of code for this. It's GIF underscore add uh, surface. All right, and this is our third and final. There is another one to do with buffers, but that's not really important for us in terms of just getting this working. Um, these are the three new functions that uh, have been added uh, in terms of handling GIFs, and this is the last one. So uh, GIF underscore add underscore surface. What this does is it takes a GIF that we've opened and uh, it adds a, a, a surface that you have available in memory to that GIF, okay, as a frame of that GIF. And there's a bunch of things that we have to add in here. Um, I am actually going to fill out all of the, uh, the different flags of this, and we'll go over what they are in a second. So first of all, the GIF index is obviously GIF. Uh, the surface index is going to be application surface. Okay, so that's going to grab whatever is, uh, you see that's turned green. It's a, a built-in part of your game. It's, uh, as I was talking about earlier, it's a surface on which everything has been drawn. You can use any surface you want if you're working with surfaces, um, and you can use that to resize uh, your application surface or, or whatever if um, or, or, or do whatever you want depending what size you've set this to and, and so on um, but I'm just going to grab the whole application surface okay that's what I want to draw. Uh, delay time now this one's important so it's measured in hundreds of a second. Um, what's interesting about this is uh, a lot of people probably don't know that there's no such thing as a true 60 frames per second GIF, okay? It, it, it doesn't actually exist. Um, the Because uh, GIFs only play back, they, they, they play back based on each frame having a certain delay time, an amount of time uh, that that frame is available on the screen. And um, in order to show it's 60 frames a second, uh, you would have to have a delay time of 1.6 uh, or rather 0 0.016 uh, <laughs> seconds, right? Uh, because it's in hundredths of a second. So the closest you can possibly get is two, okay? If you were to put in uh, 1.6 as your delay for each frame, um, it would round it, I think, to two in the best case scenario, okay? But it, it only takes integers. So the closest we can get is two. Um, you, don't really want to use one that can cause a few problems in some browsers. They if they if they see a one, uh, they tend to think that uh, no no GIF can ever play that fast, so it'll automatically set it to ten or something like that, and you don't want that. Um, so set each frame to be two if you want it at sixty uh, frames a second. In fact, technically speaking, you can't even really get a true thirty frames a second on a GIF because the closest you can get 
is um, a delay of three, but it's much closer because that uh, the uh, a true thirty frames a second GIF would be um, a three point three recurring, right? Um, but the closer you can get is three, and that's actually pretty close if you want to do a thirty uh, frames a second GIF. We're going to go for the closest we can get to a nice smooth sixty one, which is two. But it is, as I say, it's point four off. It is going to be. Um, your GIF is going to be slightly slower uh, than true 60 frames per second, okay? Just worth bearing that in mind. That's true no matter how you make a GIF, okay? There's no, as I said, there's no, no such thing as a true 60 frame per second GIF. Um, but uh, as I said, this is the closest we can get. And there are a couple more um, things in here. And I'm just going to open up the help page so I can uh, go through them with you uh, for this function. Just get those across. Um, so as I say, we've got we've had the GIF index, which we put in the surface, and the delay time. We've also got um, the X offset that we can add. These are all optional, so we could go ahead without any of these, but I'll put them all in just to show. Um, uh, so you can have an offset. So if you want to capture a certain area of the uh, the surf uh, the surface that you provided, it's not super flexible. Like you can only just offset it by a certain amount. You're still getting the exact same size. Uh, based on whatever you set uh, the size of your GIF to be. Um, but that lets you provide an offset. And then this last one can be important too, um, which is uh, the quantization amount, which is basically to do with the quality of the GIF. Uh, it defaults to two and uh, the manual recommends using two. Uh, based on it, it says that the difference between quality between two and three isn't super high. And apparently three takes a lot more um, file space. I found I been able to use three without it taking too much file space, so you know your mileage may vary. I haven't uh, experimented with it a whole lot. Um, the quality um, varies mostly depending on how many colors uh, you seem to have in your game, because it's got a very limited uh, fixed palette. Uh, the the system for uh, recording gifts in Game Maker. Um, so if you use colors that line up well with that palette, you'll get a better GIF. Um, this game has a few little issues with the sprite, uh, the slimes don't always come out the right color. But you, you'll see what I mean in a second anyway. Anyway, let's just add those extra um, flags into here. So as I said, there's the X offset, uh, which is going to be zero. The Y offset is going to be zero. And the last one's a quantization, which will be two. I mean, I've just set them all to the defaults, but just uh, for the sake of completion, I'm going through it there. Um, so I'm just going to run this now. There will actually be one tiny problem with this that um, I'll deal with in a second, uh, but just to show you. So uh, we didn't put anything in to like really show if it's running or anything like that, which you might want to do so that you don't you know accidentally record a like 10 gigabyte GIF or whatever, or you don't have some sort of memory crash, you know. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to come into here. I'm going to press G, so we should be recording now. I'll just beat up this slime, he dies, and then we'll press G again, and then that should have stopped it, so we shouldn't get any of that at the end there. So let's close this now. And I'm just going to navigate to the folder where this is saved. So your GIF will be saved um, in your app data local folder um, in a folder that matches the name of your project. Okay, by default, if you've not done any fancy stuff with the new sandboxing stuff, that's where it's going to save it out. Okay, um, for me, that's Sean.js app data local action RPG, your computer name goes there, right? Uh, but we can already see something might be a bit wrong with this GIF. So let's just uh, take a look here. Um, you can see it's recorded some stuff, but it's not quite recorded uh, the area we wanted. And this is something you might run into. This is, the only reason I'm covering this is because I know a lot of people are making pixel art games and they'll might have a similar situation to this. So what's going on here is, yes, I, I've created a GIF with the, the resolution width and resolution height, which is 320 by 180. Um, and then added my application surface to it. The problem is my application surface is actually way bigger uh, than my game resolution because if I take a look at like my uh, my first room here, um, the width of the room is uh, 320 by 180, sure, and the viewport is capturing uh, 320 by 180, 180, but the viewport uh, is 1280 by 720 because I wanted a bigger window than 320 by 180 uh, just to, to to run the game in and be able to see what the hell I'm doing, right? 
Um, so you might have this problem if you've made your, your viewport bigger because your application surface is going to size itself to the display when your game first starts up, okay? But what you can do is you can correct that, and I already have a line in place for this, I just commented it out for showing this, and that's uh, this one. So surface resize, application surface, resolution width, resolution height. A lot of people don't know they can do this because they don't realize that they can use these functions like surface resize on the application surface, but you absolutely can. And by doing this, um, we fix our application service to be the resolution of our game, which is something you probably want to do if you're making a pixel art game. There's reasons why you might not, but um, generally speaking, you're probably gonna wanna do this. It'll help with things like draw a line and things like that uh, being the correct size and uh, drawing other things, making sure um, that the surface you're drawing to is actually the correct resolution for your pixel art, okay? It can fix a few um, issues with that kind of thing. So uh, do that if you need to do that. Um, that's everything else. So, I mean, if you don't want to do that, like in my game Pokepoke, um, I actually want the resolution of the game to be bigger than the pixel art for a few reasons involving the spear rotating and stuff like that. Um, if you want to do that, what you can do instead is create a new surface um, that you then copy the application surface to and resize down, okay, if, if you want to do that. Or you can just copy your GIF the actual size of the application surface, but that might end up with a really big GIF. It's up to you, um, but I just thought I'd talk a bit about that and how you can manage that. So I'm just going to try recording this again. So let's, let's beat up this, beat up the slime and press G again there. Close this down and see what, uh, what we got. This is looking better. Let's open this, and here is our GIF. You can see there's like a little flickering in the slimes there, they're like changing color a little bit. That's just, again, a little bit of a palette issue with the game and, and with the, the GIF stuff. I could play around um, with the quantization settings and stuff like that, I don't know. But I think there's a limit to how good the quality is gonna be on the GIFs you get out of this, uh, unfortunately. But what is really useful about it is it lets you capture your frames at a pace that you want, um, being able to set the delay and everything like that and get it exactly when you want. Whereas when you do record with something like GIF cam, um, the problem can be that uh, you have to do some workarounds to get it to, to, work, uh, to capture like a high frame rate. Um, GIFs, so like for Pokebook I have to make everything run at 30 frames a second and uh, then set GIF cam to record 60 and it records it because it only records at 30 frames a second but then it sets the frame delay to uh, two and, and so on. And it kind of works but it's a bit of an awkward workaround. This can be help helpful in lots of ways for capturing very specific areas of your game and capturing them and, and being able to capture them at the exact frame rate you want whenever you want. So there's definitely a lot of uses for this. Um, thought I'd show you that because as I say, not a lot of people know that that's a feature that's come out now. It's been in beta for a while, but now it's in the latest stable version. So it's as of like 2.2.2 point something or other. And uh, you should all have access to that now. Hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Um, just a little video while I'm still working on this action RPG stuff. A huge unrelenting thanks as always for the ceaseless support and patience of everybody who supports me on Patreon. A shout out in particular and in no particular order to the following. Zenan May, Zephyr Flame, Victor Stewart, Timothy Hamilton, T. Lesson, Stephen Hagen, Cromulent Studios, Shogo0410, Sean, Rupinder, Rune Jorgensen, Run, Roven Darlin, Robert Churches, Relentless Rex, Pierce, Owen Morgan, Michael Ward, Max M, Lodewick Tossaint, Kimo Savalampi, Joseph Wetmore, Jason McMillan, Jason, James Siggins, James L. Anderson, James Grumley, Hare, Gabe, Do What Doobie, Dark Rider 0318, Daka Dondigo, Bertie T, and Bowser the Dog. Thank you all ever so much, and thank you for watching. Hopefully, catch you guys next time.